We all have, of course, a mental image of what the sun looks like, plus what we can see on our window every day, but new images might change how you think about the sun. Thanks to a new solar telescope, we have the most detailed pictures ever of the sun's surface. So to talk about the significance of these images is friend of the show, an astrophysicist for the National Science Foundation, program director at the NSF Directorate for Mathematical and Physical Sciences Division of Astronomical Sciences. What a title, Dr. <laughs> oh Welcome back, Dr. Joe. It's great to see you. Great to That's see you. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Love so let's you. throw up this image on the screen that we have. Shek, just showing the scale. and of, uh, what? Can you explain to the viewers what exactly they're seeing here? Yeah, so first of all, this is coming yeah. from our newest telescope. Uh, that's just coming online, and this is an engineering image, the NSF's Na uh, Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope in, in Hawaii. And mm -hmm. so what we're seeing is on the left, the, the disk of the sun, and in the blow up in the inset, that's the image from the, the DKIST mm -hmm. telescope. And so um, the resolution that you see, that little element is about the size of Texas, and the oh, finest wow. detail that we can see that's on the bottom right corner, uh -huh. that's a depiction of Manhattan Island. Huh. And so it's about 10 kilometers. 10, 15 kilometers resolution element. Wow. So what are they seeing there in that kind of scales? Is that the is that a like the, the surface that's being, that, just because it's so hot? That's like, the surface. It's yeah. the photosphere of the sun. Right. And you know, the sun is, is very hot in the core, mm -hmm. 15 ish million degrees where the nuclear fusions are taking place, fusion is taking place. And then that heat uh, radiates out, and in the upper half of the sun or so, the gas, because the sun is a plasma, yeah. it's, a, it's a ball of gas, that gas gets hot, it gets buoyant, and, and it floats up to the top, releases its energy, and then flows back down. Hmm. So those little granules that you're seeing, it's called granulation, in fact, are the top of convection cells. Um, and here's a nice okay. image yeah. of them. It's a video, in fact. This yeah. is it's just, just fabulous, this image. Wow. See the, you can see the, in the, the middle of those cells, right. again, the size of Texas, uh -huh. the gas is coming up, it cools down, and then it goes down on the edges, which are dark, right. and you see they're flowing back into the interior of the sun. Huh. Were, there, were there any surprises here in these images? Is this basically what people expected to see? So, yes, yes, and we've seen, you know, we've seen solar granulation like this, but it's the resolution that's fantastic. Right. It's remember, unbelievable. The sun is the uh, largest external influence on Earth. And so understanding the sun and space weather that's caused mostly by the sun is, mm -hmm. is really, really important. And on that video again, I don't know if we yeah. can yeah, let's put it up. Let's play the video up again. Um, watch that video all day, yeah. it's sort of relaxing. It's so fast. By, by the way, you know, you can go home. It's, it's, uh, you can go home and make right. a pot of oatmeal, and the oatmeal huh. is doing exactly the same thing, ah. these convection cells. Huh. But notice the, the bright regions, the little streamers of, of bright bright yeah. light, yeah. Yeah. those are the bases of magnetic field lines. So there's uh -huh. tubes of magnetic field coming out of the surface of the sun and flowing up into the upper atmosphere. And so this telescope gives us the ability to understand the magnetic field in a way that we haven't before. So Dr. Joe, what do we still need to know about the sun? Like what, what, is, what are the, the biggest remaining questions about the sun? So that those yeah. magnetic fields are a big driver of, of space weather yeah. and the impact on the Earth. They cause uh, coronal mass ejections, which are uh, uh, explosions of charged particles that come out, and if they interact with the Earth, they, they can cause uh, dramatic and, and, and catastrophic It can, uh, it events. knocks out electricity, Knocks right? out the, yeah. the electric grid, um, And when's satellites. the last time this happened? This, was the, with the in Carrington the, event or something? The, well, like in the mid-80s, yeah. there right. was the big, uh, in Ontario, uh -huh. uh, the province of Ontario in Canada, that the grid was knocked out because of this. And, <laughs> and you know, we're, we're an even more interconnected world now, and we have right. satellites that can be destroyed from coronal mass ejections. Mm. So we really don't understand how those solar magnetic fields are formed and how they interact and, mm. and, and what happens. And that's basically what um, DKIST will be doing so over is, time. So is the hope that you would have yeah. some predictive ability that you'd be able to forecast the space weather? Certainly pr predictive and for forecasting, yes. And then just a better understanding, which would, yes, allow yeah. us to understand what's going so on. So what are the other impacts of space weather? Not just on the Earth, but just generally. I mean, will, how, how does it affect us as well? Well, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's mostly the, yeah, the these charged mass. particles that are coming off of, off okay. of the sun. Yeah. Um, and how how great of an engineering feat was it to... It's a phenomenal engineering yeah. feat, right? So the solar telescope, it's four meters in diameter, the, the mirror. Uh -huh. And, you know, most astronomers like me, we're looking at faint astronomical objects. We want as many photons as possible from these objects. Well, the sun gives us too many photons. It's so bright. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the, the big engineering feat, one of the big engineering feats of DKIST is getting rid of all those photons and the heat in particular so the mirrors and the instruments aren't being melted. Yeah. But, and that's a... That's a huge 
um, that's a huge engineering feat to cool the mirror and the telescope such that it's not being destroyed. And there were additional images of Betelgeuse that you wanted to show. Yeah, share with so us as yes. Well? So Betelgeuse has been in the news. Uh -huh. uh, Betelgeuse is the red star that's in the shoulder, the the left shoulder of Orion as we're facing it. Orion is that nice constellation that's out now. So you know tonight when it's when it's clear at six or seven, go out and you can see you can see Orion and Betelgeuse. Mm -hmm. Betelgeuse is the nearest supergiant star to Earth. Hmm. It's about 700 light years away. And these supergiant uh, stars are interesting because they're very important for us as humans because all the elements heavier than helium, carbon, and oxygen, all the way through iron on the periodic table, are created in the interior of supergiant stars. Hmm. Supergiant stars are, are massive. They uh, explode as supernova, a huge explosion, and in the explosion, all elements heavier than iron are created. So you get the creation of elements in the interior and in the explosion, and then the explosion throws this stuff out into the universe, and, um, and subsequent generations of stars and planets can form. Mm. So we wouldn't be here if it weren't for supergiant stars like Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is going through a very strange uh, uh, dimming of its light huh. that has, that's unprecedented. Huh. It's, it's dimmed by a factor of about two and a half over the last month or so, several months. Really? And How many light years away is it? Uh, 700 light years away. Okay. And so if it explodes as a supernova, which it will yeah. at some point, we don't know when, gotcha. um, it'll be a fantastic thing. It'll be brighter than the full moon. We'll be able to see it during the day. It'll cast shadows at night for a period of huh. six, seven, eight months. And is, and is that the expectation that that dimming indicates it may be moving into that phase? Well, it's unprecedented, so we don't know. These, huh. these big stars, if we could put that graphic up yeah, again. Yeah, let's put the graphic up, uh, please. By the way, that's an, that's an, that's an actual image of, of Betelgeuse. It's so big uh -huh. that you can image the surface from, from our ALMA telescope in Chile. <sighs> Yeah. And if we dropped it in our solar system, you can see how big it is. It extends yeah. out to the orbit of Jupiter. Wow. And so gigantic thing here. Uh -huh. And, you know, it will explode. We just don't know Into when. a supernova. So yes. it, when yeah. you say we don't know when, does it mean, like, could be any day? Could be any <laughs> it, millennia? Well, it's, <laughs> it's it, it, probably on the scale of... Um, any day to up to several hundred thousand years from now, Got but not it. much more. Yeah. But it might have exploded already, right? It's 700 light years away. We, yeah, if, we literally have no idea. If it exploded idea. today, we, it'll take 700 years. So. <laughs> but but it'll be a, a fabulous thing. When yeah, I'm just hoping I get to see it. Brain so. feel better to think about this instead it of does. Iowa. That's right. <laughs> this, is, this is a much more calming experience. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Joe. You're always. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you again. And we'll have more rising for you after this.